Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast. I'm your host, Bob DeMarco. On this edition of the show, I'm speaking with Levon of the Knife Nuts Podcast and the new importing business from Russia with Levon. He's always had his finger on the pulse of the knife world and is one of those people that I look to for the newest and coolest folders. Uh, You just got to check out his Instagram. Uh, His new importing business from Russia with Levon is responsible for bringing seven unique Russian folders to the American market. This is one of them. Uh, Braving customs and other international trade obstacles from the United States to Russia. Now, this task is not suited for all temperaments, but I am glad there is Levon to bring these exotic offerings to all of us for a decent asking price. I'm interested to find out how he got involved in importing and what the process is really like. But first, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you can't finish this episode in video form, remember to download it to your favorite podcast app. And if you think what we do here is valuable, you want to help support the show while enjoying interview extras, knife giveaways, stickers, early access to the show, and more, you can do so on Patreon. Quickest way to get there is to head over to thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Again, that's thenifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Have a knife you want featured or reviewed? Call the Knife Junkies 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487 and let us know. Levon, good to see you again. Welcome to the Knife Junkie podcast. Bob, it's always a pleasure, man. I got to tell you, I need a transcript or something of what you just said in the beginning there because there's no <laughs> way i could say it better um when i launched the new website or something because that was phenomenal it could be your bio it could be your new that's, bio. dude that's it man that's it <laughs> that was that was wonderful i i Thank uh you. i avoided the use of the word maven because every time i bring it up people go huh because it sounds like <laughs> maiden zealot but... <laughs> maven all those cliche you know well you're get out you're... the thesaurus yeah. You you are one of those guys, and it says it says in your uh, bio on your webpage that uh, you know it's it's your love of fine tools, whether it's watches, pens, uh, muscle cars, that kind of thing, yeah. that really drove you to knives. Um, yeah, what 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 where has that taken you? I mean, it seems like that hobby, knives in particular, has taken you some places. It it definitely seems to be the one that's. Um... Uh, bore the most fruit, I guess. I don't know. Uh, something that's sort of stuck around and has kept my interest the longest and um, seems to have uh, led me down new paths and introduced me to the new people and um, new experiences. You know, everything else always just seems so crowded. You know, you, you talk about the other um, hobbies, that you met that mentioned that I mentioned in that, that website bio that's going on five, six years old now, but um, you know, cars, you know, pens, watches, those are huge, huge things that are saturated with people. I, I, and at the time knives were still very niche and I think they still mm-hmm. are, but it's a growing hobby and uh, people are hungry for new stuff all the time. It seems like you um, always kind of have the new stuff, maybe a little bit before it comes out, or um, I don't know. It, like I like I said before, it, it always seems like you've got the new cool thing, and it's kind of like, wow, what, what's he carrying? How do, how do you think you got to that? Because I mean, with watches, like you probably didn't have Rolex sending you their new stuff, or you know, Ford probably wasn't reaching out to you, maybe. Uh, but but it it seems like you have somehow really uh, gotten up some sort of like really great spot in, in the, in this knife kingdom where a lot of great stuff is coming through your hands kind of early on. Well, um, I don't know. I mean, I spent a lot of time talking to people about knives and I think, I mean, a lot of time <laughs> there's, a, I mean, really there's a lot of time that I spend, looking at knives, handling knives, talking to people in the industry about knives, about the business, about their businesses um, and things like that. So 
naturally things pass through my hands. Um, news gets brought up, things like that. It, it happens naturally. It's not something that I, sometimes I'll get really excited about something and I'll, I'll, I'll follow the breadcrumbs and see where it lands or new makers or the venture that I'm working on now leads me to new stuff too. But it, genuinely it's an obscene amount of time and effort <laughs> and um, research that goes into, um, you know, trying to find these things. And, and, you know, sometimes there's a, a number of months and stuff that leads up to that knife before it ends up on my Instagram or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's never, it's not just, it's not always as sporadic. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, you know, I'm sitting here listening and, and um, I'm always trying to get to the bottom of like, uh, um, you know, though I, I outside of knives, I would say, yeah, I'm not, I'm not that much of a materialistic guy, but man, when it comes to knives, yeah, I really turn into a, a rampant sort of materialist and it, and I like to ponder kind of why, like, what is it about knives in particular? Like, why do I not feel that way about wrenches? You know, um, I it's just the eternal question. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's like, why? And, 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 you know, I suppose I could save a lot of money if I got to the bottom of it and sort of worked my, you know, conversion therapy out of it or something. But, um, you know, here you, you came into this hobby with a, with a number of other pretty powerful hobbies or hobbies that have a powerful draw. And yet this hobby has kind of turned you into an entrepreneur. Was you were you an entrepreneur beforehand? I mean, I've always liked to do things on my own. You know, um, I was never successful. Probably I was an entrepreneur. I, I had businesses. I, I have businesses, but um, to varying degrees of success. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I don't really necessarily, um, you know, I feel like that word gets thrown around a lot. So, yeah, yeah. you know, so I don't I don't like to. Uh, say things like that plus like even this whole thing started on a on a whim it's not like i went and i'm going to go out and i'm going to import russian knives and i'm going to you know it i was just like i saw these cool knives and i was like you know i'm a collector i like collecting knives but the idea is is that that can only get me excited so often you know like mm -hmm. yeah. there's a lot of stuff coming out there's stuff like and and like you said like I have a lot of knives. I see a lot of stuff. I see a lot of stuff first or whatever people think or whatever, but I have to do something else. You know, I have to try and bring stuff, new stuff to uh, people, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's really what I I'm getting, you know, what I get out of it is more so the fact that I get to introduce cool new knives to more people. Uh, how much, how much of that, um, how much do you rely on the podcast, on the Knife Nuts podcast? Very popular knife podcast. I don't know if it was the first, but probably the most enduring. Um, is the podcast a vehicle for that for you? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I, I that was, uh, you know, one hand feeds the other for me. Like the podcast was is still my baby, you know, like that's my my main gig. Um, and that's really where my credibility um, is. Uh, or lack thereof <laughs> is um, is nested, you know, um, and that's really let me build uh, a reputation for myself and uh, allow me to forge these business partnerships. Um, so it's 100 percent been a big uh, help for me to uh, get in the door with a lot of people, you know. Uh, do, do you think that um, just hearing you on your podcast and hearing you interact um, with with Brian, Jake and Dave, like and t and and guests that you have on the show, do you think that that has sort of proven your credibility to others uh, as you're learning kind of along the way? Is that is that what gives you that? <laughs> Probably. I mean, I don't know if necessarily <laughs> those conversations discomfort. <laughs> no, no, I those. <laughs> so there's the conversations that happen on the show you know and in that regard we're all in a character so to speak mm -hmm. you know we all play our part and we all play a role 
and we we have a lot of fun but the amount of serious conversation around the industry um there's hours and hours and hours of conversation happening um outside of the podcast itself that no one hears you know and and i think that's really where um more of that takes place, whether it's with dealers, whether it's with, um, you know, uh, makers, uh, designers, uh, manufacturers, all sorts of things. So that sort of thing is, you know, that's really where it comes down to. But also, yeah, I'm sure their first introduction to me is probably through listening to the podcast. <laughs> right, right, right. And I saw you at uh, at Blade Show. Yeah, um, at the table is sharp by design, and and uh, you and you had uh, the uh, from Russia with knives or from Russia with uh, Levon there, <laughs> and uh, and those those knives, and it was cool to see you work in the crowd, and and everyone kind of knew you, everyone kind of um, knew to come up to you and check out what was happening, or uh, you know around you and Brian, it was pretty cool. Uh, well, I gotta say, like we have like the coolest. Uh, I say fans, but it's just, it's just, you know, community, you know, mm. it's not really, it's not really fans. It's just other collectors and things like that. You know, yeah. um, people who are into the stuff that we're into. Um, and, you know, Brian's work speaks for itself. Uh, so it's, it's very easy to um, be, you know, at a table where, you know, a crowd just gathers around pretty easily, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was a thrill. You know, I've, I've only experienced, uh, one of his knives, the arch nemesis that, uh, Alex of the knife box channel sent me oh, yeah. to check out. And it was amazing. I had it for a couple of weeks pretending it was mine. And then, uh, and then at blade show, I had a chance to check out other knives at that table and man, they are incredible. It was a thrill really, because I, I don't, I don't own any, of, I do not own any of his knives, nor do I own any of the Riot produced uh, versions of his knives and well man, they're silly talk to me well well i'll get you some to check out and okay if there's if there's a custom of brian's you want to see i'm sure he will send it to you to see for sure i mean they are really exquisite i, I mean I, I i everything about them looking at them feeling that uh you know holding them and all that but really that detent is pretty awesome oh yeah 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 brian uh, is uh is definitely a, <laughs> a character and a very talented one at that. No doubt. All right. So walk us into how you became an importer of these awesome knives. And before you do, I just want to say, I got this from you. Um, I saw this, you put this up on your Instagram. I remember it was a Saturday morning. I was lying in bed and I saw this and I, and I, you know, without even sitting up, pulled the trigger on this because, uh, because of the fuller. I mean, that's, that's yeah, what I really. Yeah. That, I mean, these, these uh, they're the brand name is Crystal Knives. K that's Crystal with a with a K and an, as K R I S T A L mm. knives. So it doesn't really make much sense, but you know, let's just go with it. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a Russian brand, um, and they're designed by Ivan B. Ivan Braganitz. So very uh, you know, well respected knife designer. He's designed the Real Steel Rokut, the uh, you know, a couple lots of designs with Real Steel. Um, a whole bunch of stuff. The, 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 uh, there's a bunch of things out there that you could, pr you probably own a, an Ivan B design and, right. <laughs> or have handled one and, and don't know it. I know, uh, um, Epic Snuggle Bunny used to have a pretty nice collection of Ivan Braganet's customs. That's, that's how I got to know him watching his videos. Yeah. He, he does have, uh, he, I, he doesn't have any anymore or maybe he does. He did a big sell off of stuff. So I'm not sure. What that he makes sense. That. Yeah. Um, you can still, uh, Ivan still sells a lot of custom stuff, but, um, he has his own OEM, you know, OEM partners that, uh, he works through, um, the same people did those crystal knives, the two, the, the two, uh, the bronze horsemen, mm -hmm. uh, which is, it's the name is the bronze horseman. It's not the color bronze. I get that answer, that question a lot. Uh, okay. So. Uh, there's two mod, there's two versions of that. Uh, they're pretty much all sold out now because they're all very limited run. They're, um, I think 150 per execution. So, and there was the, um, I'm sorry, the, uh, the Aurora. So yes. the two models, this, this one. 
So uh, are these are these made exclusively for you? Um, you said a run of a hundred. That's like nothing. They're um, not. Yeah, they're actually made not for for me. Well, however, I will make an announcement on here. Um, that you got you're the first to know. Actually, awesome. I am. Yes, I am officially the U.S. distributor, exclusive U.S. distributor for Crystal Knives now. Nice. So, so any of them that come into the United States will be done through me. It was sort of like unofficial that I was anyway, but now it's like, hey, you're the guy now. So if a dealer wanted to, say, pick some up at some point, um, hey, I'm the guy. They, they got to go but, through you. <laughs> but you see, what that means is new knives have to come out. And there are two new designs. Really? What? Released, yep. Are they both Ivan Braganets as well? bingo oh and they'll be you can actually see them on the on the there's two prototypes at least on the crystal knives uh instagram uh they'll be released probably the first uh first couple months of of 2022 they're very they're very cool so how did it how, well okay i mean that i cannot wait for so people need to go to the crystal knives that's k-r-i-s-t-a-l uh, I'll nice. probably post them up too, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Check them out on on Instagram. I want to. I'm definitely looking forward to that. But I, I want to know how you forged this relationship. Like, how did you? How did you bring one in? It felt good. You brought another one in. Like, how did that? How did that sort work? Of, sort of. I mean, not too not too far off from there. I. Uh, hey, look. There's me on the Crystal Knives <laughs> site. Um, Crystal Knives Instagram. But uh, you can see two of the models right there. There's one with that giant pivot collar. Mm, um, mm -hmm. And then you'll see the other one that that weird um, hawkbill blade. Yeah, that's those are the two. Those are the two new models that will be coming out. Nice. Pretty rad. Um, what was I saying? Uh, yeah. So Ivan and I talk a lot. So I, uh, Ivan um, uh, and I talk a lot about different stuff. Um, my nationality. I'm 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 Armenian. Okay. So I, that is a natural in with anyone from that part of the world <laughs> some for some reason. So there's a cultural bond from yeah. that. I don't speak Russian at all. Uh, you know, uh, and Ivan's not Russian technically either, but that's beside the point. Um, but, uh, you know, there, there's some familiarity there, you know, uh, if that makes any sense. Yeah. And I would bet some serious respect between cultures just because they're both pretty, sure. pretty tough, you know? Yeah, I guess I'm not that tough. <laughs> uh, and I have, well, it's, it's just a matter of, I respect Ivan. I've always loved his designs. He's always asking me about, um, you know, he's showing me drawings and things like that of stuff that's coming out oh, cool. and asking, you know, what, what he thinks of this. And we just start talking about different stuff. And, uh, I see the crystal knives thing and I'm like, Ivan, do you think I should hit these guys up? Cause they were done for a Russian dealer called forest home. That's who, that's who uh, basically commissioned them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're basically the blade HQ of Russia. Okay. And that's who I do all, who I did most of my um, negotiating with um, without putting too much out there. I mean, it's really not that much of a secret, but that's who, who, you know who commissioned those specific two knives okay um so that's who runs that brand so that's who he put me in touch with um really great people to work with they've been super super fun you know really easy to easy going um and what i did was i didn't know what the knives were like because you know i'm i'm a knife guy i was like i'm not just gonna go you know start selling this stuff right away right so i i ended up buying I had bought a couple of them because I wanted to say like, if, I'm not going to, I bought four because I was like, if two, if, if these four are good, I know at least there's a good sample that these are going to be decent. Yeah. So I carried two of them, two or three of them for a month before I decided that, okay, I'm going to start bringing these in. Um, and that's the way I did it. This is the uh, first run. Yeah. And and then and obviously they they went like hotcakes. I mean, I remember I saw the the first one you started with was the Bronze Horseman, right? I did both. Or, did or you both. did the Rokot early, I think, too. 
Ah, um, uh, you're probably right. Yeah, the rogue, the rogue, there was probably. Like, I mean, this was all within. Yeah. After I decided to do it, I did it with all within a couple weeks. So I did one one week. I did the the crystal knives. The following week, I did the Russian market row cut. You know, because we yeah. got the rocket here in in several forms, but they got the one with the that brown micarta. Oh, and yeah. And then they got an M three ninety one. Oh. So uh yeah. so, and there's a a little bit of a mystique in it um i mean for me i don't have a russian knife i, I don't have a, a a custom knife factory knife i don't have any russian knives at all and and here um when this when you came out with this one it, that saturday morning i remember thinking wow like not only is this a knife that is really exciting to me because i was in the throes of a uh kind of old school tactical uh you know give me my Strider or Chris Reeve knives uh, knife. Um, and, and I don't know at the moment, uh, at that moment, I was tired of frame lock flippers that, you know, first world, first world problems or whatever. I just kind of wasn't interested. And I saw this and it totally rekindled my interest uh, in, in getting a nice titanium it's frame a, lock flick. Plus it's from Russia. How cool. Right. It's a little unconventional, you know, like it doesn't mm -hmm. look like it should work. Like the flipper tabs below the center line of the, of the yeah. pivot and like, how is this thing going to work? But it's very uniquely Russian. Like that design is uh, it's like super European, like all the Shirogorovs, like all of that stuff from that region, like the thinner profile, like that, that really acute tip, all yeah. of that stuff. You, you know, that's, that's from that region for sure, you know. And I almost feel like the blade of this was hollow ground before the um, fuller was removed because um, the material, you know, north of the edge, but south of the fuller is so much thinner than it is above the fuller. It almost feels like it was already thin and they just thinned it way out. Uh, I think that's you're, you're close to that. I think what that, happens is they take a they take a, a really um they grind the fuller into the into the blank really really deep and then they flat grind it uh yes 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 okay um just a beautiful knife i mean i always talk i've shown this one off a lot on the on the show here but i i love all of the um uh horizontal jimping i don't know what else to call it it's like jimping all over the body but it's yeah. uh oh it's just grippy and nice and and this thing it's is so too. sharp it's it so sharp very, very well yeah yeah it, they definitely they definitely perform so i was very pleasantly surprised by you know they they definitely function there they they lock up solid they work you know i've i've been lucky i think i've only had two people that have had you know complaints about them and uh and that was it so so before you were talking about these uh, new designs that are in the offing, and it, it makes me wonder um, how much do you uh, on those or, or do you have any um, kind of inkling that you'll have design input in the future on some of these knives? Do you want to do a Levon design knife or? Yeah, I mean, truthfully, like there's not much money in this. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean like yeah. this is very much a passion project sure. it's, it's not something that i'm going to be able to retire on you know like i don't want people to think like i'm making it big like you know this is not something that i recommend you try and do yeah. you know it's uh it's very hard to try and make the numbers out to where i can make it so these are something that you actually want to spend the money on. Do you know what I mean? Yes. Um, Cause just getting them in from Russia, shipping them here, getting them to you, it's a whole thing. So, you know, it, there's that. Uh, but so yes, the, the, uh, the main, the end goal would be to have my own knives, the, my own brand. I have, exclusive knives coming you know um there's one in the works with another one with adam purvis which will be really really cool oh, nice i'm very excited with that i still want to do a lot more of those uh, a lot more exclusive knives um what i'd like to do um and this is something again uh, you're gonna hear it first uh what i'd like to start doing you know what I, what i've done in the past is do a lot of 
uh, knife nuts editions of knives, like with Brian and things like that. What I think I want to do with that branding now, since those things sell out so quick and have like kind of like their own, <laughs> they take it on their own sort of, you know, uh, life. Mm -hmm. I want to do those with new designers and new makers. So if there's oh. like new um, up and coming designers, like there's new, um, even a new manu, like someone having a knife manufactured in China something like that. And they want to do a knife nuts edition to help bolster their quantity, their, their, their minimum order quantity. Like, I think that would be a really, you know, cool oh, way yeah. of, of doing something, you know, this is, this is Brian and I chit chatting about stuff. So that's something I would love to do. And it helps, you know, get a, a, a new designer's knife or a maker's design in the hands of more people an exclusive design and, you know, helps use, I guess, whatever bolsters, whatever the knife nuts brand can do. Yeah. Yeah. That, and, you know? and it, it builds up the body of work, the knife nuts body of work. I mean, those are so cool. Exactly. The, uh, it works for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 um, if you haven't seen them, definitely look them up. Um, but, uh, the, the knife nuts exclusives, uh, of, of Brian's, designs are beautiful and and you always have some sort of interesting handle material micarta for a while you had like that sort of a lavender micarta or what was it, it was like a tiffany it was blue an Alutex. it was alutex so alutex. that was yeah it's a twill basically okay. like a like a silver twill but it has like a clear impregnated into it like a bit colored clear um epoxy uh, I mean, those we've are... done, I've done stuff with Adam some of our our exclusive with Adam Purvis are some of my favorites so have you have you ever kept an eye on how those appreciate? I mean, those, those must be worth a lot. <laughs> oh my god! Um, I some of them have uh, done some really stupid money on eBay, which I I'm actually more embarrassed about than anything else. It's just it's not really something that I want to talk about on here because it's no, I it get doesn't you. make any it doesn't make any sense to me because honestly, I'm more offended by it. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, why did you sell it? Do you know what I mean? I mean yes, of course you're not. You can do whatever you want, but I'm, I'm personally offended that you sold. No, 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 no. I get it. I, you, you know, you better have gone to that your dog's heart transplant or something. You know, like you're right. Yeah, you <laughs> know, like if you're you're just trying to get top dollar for it, I could sell. I could have sold it for you. You know what I mean? If you were yeah. just trying to move it along, I could have it... moved it very easily for you. There is no, yeah, oh, for sure, yeah. There, <laughs> I'm there's just being a jerk. It's the, no, no, yeah. but but. For, I mean, th there's no telling what is going to grip someone. There's no telling what someone's going to get obsessive and weird about. I mean, I, I, I know I get obsessive and weird about things. And, you know, if it's that, if it's that damn, uh, you know, knife nuts edition knife that you have to have each one of, you know, and you're missing one, you're going to pay that I'm missing one. I don't yeah. even have, I don't even have all of them. <laughs> you got, you're going to have to go on and pay those stupid prices, man. I seriously. If anyone has one of the the micro evos with the with the uh, the teal Alutex, Oof. hook up your boy over here. <laughs> he needs one. You know, yeah, we'll we'll put we'll put your address in the uh, down below. Uh, but uh, I, I want to ask you about the OEM who makes these knives. Are they mm -hmm. in Russia? Are they in China? What where? China. Are, they're, they're China. China. Oh, uh, I what I so I I asked when when I first started doing this. <laughs> I jokingly asked Ivan just just to see what answer he would give me. I said, "Oh, so these are made in Ru are these made in Russia?" He goes, he goes, "Levon, come on, man. The the world was made in in 7 days. The rest was the rest of it was made in China." <laughs> that, that's yeah. So I was like, that's funny. That, that is it's funny. True. It's true. But that he has his uh, I truthfully and this is a pet peeve of mine. You know how we all have things that sure. annoy us. And this is partially of me being, again, spending way too much time talking about knives and talking to people about the industry and all this other stuff. The question, I mean, and I, I, I do on one hand understand why people ask it mm -hmm. is where, who made it? You know, what, what's the OEM? There is no other industry where that question gets asked. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no other industry. 
It's only this. It's Who only made this wrench? <laughs> yeah, it doesn't it doesn't get asked, or even cars, or because there's tons of OEMs that make parts for cars. Oh, right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, some of them are out there, but you can tell. But watches, at all things, whatever it might be, there are manufacturers that do things for big brands. You know what I mean? And no one's asking those questions, you know. But neither here nor there. Ivan has his, it's not so much the manufacturer itself, it's how that manufacturer is being overseen. Uh-huh. You know, and that's why brands like We and Riot are, you know, so successful is because they have people that run those companies and they have people in the shop overseeing the manufacturing. So you could have the OEM of Boker, who's doing great things, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. You know, but they're not known for having the best quality control, but have them put out something that's to the same quality as Ria. It just depends on what the price point is of the product that you're trying to manufacture. Yeah. And whatever the client wants. Yeah, I, I th- have wondered about why my instinct is to ask is to find out like, oh, hmm, where, where was this synapse made? Like, and, and. I I have a theory about it, and I think that um, it's it's my mind still getting used to the fact that there is more that there are more than two or three exceptional OEMs in in China, and 100%. and, and, and more it, than twenty, yeah, There's more than two hundred, <laughs> and and can you can you tell the difference? <laughs> Most likely not, you know. May, Again, you know. it comes down to the people more so than <laughs> the shop. Yeah. You know, the people that are running it and it may be, you could have, let's, I'm going to pull a name out of my, you know, out of the thin air. Let's say best tech. You could have a best tech knife that's made by several different shops. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I, yeah. And they may have a standard. I'm just giving you an example of an, a company that may use several different shops. You know, it's funny what you were saying about Boker before, because um, I remember like when, when Boker came onto, um, my radar, I, I always knew them as a kid, you know, they made little scout knives and, and stuff that I could get when I was a kid, uh, but they, they're a legacy brand for sure. I, oh I, yeah. I, it's easy to pick on Boker, but they have such a history. Well, when, when they came back on my radar, you know, as a, as a modern collector down know 10 or 15 years ago, it was in the midst of their quality control um moment you know yeah and uh and it's sort of in my mind stuck and then you know recently i got i know you got the gadritis uh yeah uh, i just posted it before pick. we started yeah i saw so that nice. and and so nice. and i recently got the gadritis boker smash it i and want this, that now oh now dude, i this, want that it is awesome it is really really awesome okay it's, i'm gonna i'm gonna buy one as soon as we're done and this <laughs> this rosewood is beautiful too i don't know if you okay if that's you, the one that's the one i'll get if you like, like guitars, that. but oh man, it's yeah, it's really, really. I'm nice. a metalhead, so yeah, you know. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, so I mean, I'm, I'm, and I have the uh, the Squail, and I have the F3. You know, a couple of like top designer um, uh, Boker models, and they're all outstanding. They're all really, really, that's really so, good. I'm, you know, it just warms my heart. You know, and I was talking to Chuck. And uh, Chuck could try this. Mm -hmm. He said they made it exactly to the prototype that I sent them. And I was like, this is just wonderful. And I kind of bought it because they're very affordable. Like for the money, you know, I know this Mm -hmm. is about my imports, but I'll talk to you about theirs. Mm -hmm. Um, Like that, they got the, you know, I, I half expected, you know, even for the price point, like there are certain things I let go, you know, like, Mm -hmm the pivot was drilled to the right size. Like these are things like you don't, you, most people don't even look for. Like there's, there's no wobble in there. There's no detent play. Like everything is just so, it's such a finely made knife. And I was like, this is a boker. I even had Jake, you know, Jake from my podcast, not from state farm. Mm-hmm. He, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I had him handle the knife uh, uh, with his eyes closed, open and close it. And he, he was just, Uh, And he knows his knives. He knows them inside and out. And he was very uh, impressed with the whole thing. Um, And he couldn't be happier when he saw that it was a boker. Like, you know, just saying, 
ah, that's just a great, you know, come up story. Yeah. Like, Cause this is just great to see. Yeah. You don't want to see a company like that flounder, you know? No, no. And they did, man. Oh, some of those knives were bad. <laughs> 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 but, you know, it is what it is. But they, they do, uh, you know, like CRKT and some other, uh, well, lots of other companies, you know, these days it's, it's an invaluable yeah. service that they, they take, the work of Chuck Adritus, which I could never, you know, uh, in good conscience at this point in my life, buy and ever have a Chuck Adritus right now. But the fact that I can go get a Boker, uh, you know, my probably one of my favorite, if I could, like, it, you know, a grail knife for me is anything by Charles Marlowe. I think his work is, mm, I think his name is fan too. God, it's drop dead gorgeous. And uh, mm -hmm. another, another case where you have to be dedicated and you have to have, the funds and the energy to and the to, connection in the connections to get one of those I, things. I, listen, everybody keeps talking about me. I don't think I could get a Marlowe if I tried. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I mean, but they're so exquisite. So like, they thank really God are. there's a, yeah. there's a boker, you know, they're squale. It's good. It's you know, nice. if, I'll, yeah. I'll check it out. I've been putting it off just because I didn't want to ruin my, uh, my mind's eye of that knife because it's such a beautiful thing. God, it really is. And they hollow grind it. And uh, I always say it looks to me like an Italian racing boat. You know, it just looks mm -hmm. like yeah. something kind of. Mm, it definitely it, does. You're, it's like high speed. Right. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about a couple of these giant knives you're bringing in now. Uh, the the You had the, the one and they're both scale release. So uh, imagine. Oh, my uh, God. I was I love them so much. Bob, I. I, they're, I'm not like a huge like big knife type of guy. Like uh -huh. I like them and stuff like. But <laughs> like I said, as someone who has a lot of knives, I gotta have something that's interesting, you know. And these really, and I didn't know what to expect because I imported again. I was bringing in a shipment of the crystal knives, and I I said uh, one of the distributors could get me a couple different things. So I said, can you throw a couple of these in there? I want to see what these are all about. So I brought them over, and I'm like, what the heck is this thing and it because i can't read russian i have no idea what i'm getting myself <laughs> into. yeah i just like the profile because it's a pretty knife this is the finca is what the, i'm talking about now that was the first the one large that, one yes the first large one looks sort of the militaristic one with, it looks yeah it looks almost like a buoy or something like that yeah. very but more euro um and then i realized it was a giant scale release like gravity knife type situation <laughs> And I was like, oh, my God, what have I discovered here? And I, dude, it is such a cool thing. And they're they're affordable. Like, I can bring them in um, and not break the bank, anyone's bank, really. Yeah. And they're tough. Well, they're super well made, um, you know, and they're just fun knives. Like, for the knife collector who has everything, you don't have one of these. You know what I mean? Do you happen to have one uh, with you at the moment? They're all sold out, huh? No, I, I didn't want to, I was going to bring one upstairs and I didn't do it because I didn't know it was that type of podcast. So That's, um, <laughs> this is I, a family you, show. We don't show not, no, but uh, uh, I can do one of these. Yeah. I can, let's see. Hold on a second. I wanted to let's, describe uh, how you deploy the, oh yeah, there we go. So look at this big thing. So that top scale where his where his thumb is slides. I think I show it pretty clear there. I'm not sure. Yeah, it actually looks really good. It just slides up and uh, kind of like a double action auto or something like whiskers or something. Yes. And it and it lets the knife out or the blade out, and then you just use centrifugal force to whip it out, whip it back in. It is yep. very cool. And then and technically you could actually consider this a two-handed opener. It has that fuller. Oh, so a two-handed opener. Reason. Yeah. If, if the, the person doesn't yes. know to slide, you can just, you'd have to really know that it slides though. Too. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty covert. So that one to me looks like, um, you know, it's like, a uh, it's in the modern military paradigm design wise. Mm -hmm. And then you brought this other large knife in that to me looks like a classic rush. It looks like a Cossack sort of knife yes. or something to me. Yeah. Uh, tell us about that one. Well, I kind of got a little carry away with that because um, the Russian name for it is Pichak, 
And I was like, that doesn't sound very marketable. P-check. So I was just playing with it and I, uh, it made the noise like fack. And I was just like, oh, well, that's just what I'm going to call it here. So I just called it fack. And it's, uh, it's a, just a bigger, meaner scale release. Doomsday. Pocket sword. Thing. Yeah. So yeah. it's all steel. It has, uh, you know, some, you know, embellished, you know, carbon fiber with some diff- there's two versions of it on there now i wasn't sure i was going to be able to get any more of these things like so i had i got five at one point and that was like all that was in the warehouse at one point and i was able to secure some more of them so i since i was doing this show i actually was going to close the pre-order um last night but i'm keeping it open till the end of the week i don't know when this is going to drop this this will go sunday go up on sunday okay i'll keep it up as long as possible but okay yeah. Um, so in general, what kind of challenges do you, um, run into dealing with international, you know, trade with Russia and I'm sure the United States is difficult to work with too. What what do you come up against? Honestly, I, I pull stuff in, in small quantities. So just the anxiety on waiting for it to get here Hmm. is, is the most difficult and, Sometimes I try to buy the stuff ahead of time and bring it in here. But my problem is I can never buy enough to um, satiate what people want. And what I've found as a knife collector is that I think people like to wait for stuff. I think it's like uh, people like to, um, uh, you know, have something to look forward to. It's a psychological thing. Um, And so at least this way, I do like a pre-order thing where I put it up. Uh, if you want it, I'm going to place a, I'm, I'll place a larger order. You guarantee the one you want and I'll get it. I'll get it over here and get it out to you, um, for a lower price than if you ever tried to do it yourself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. What I mean? yeah. I think there's something to be said for that. Like there, uh, about the waiting part, you know, um, sometimes you need a quick fix. Sometimes you run down to sure. Walmart and uh, buy a Kershaw that you don't want just mm-hmm. so you can open it up. Uh, oh, yeah. Not me. Uh, I've heard of other instant other guys who do that. <laughs> There's tons of stuff out there that exists for instant gratification, yeah. I think. But, the, but then there are special purchases, and you mm-hmm. get excited about them, and they do take time. And then we can't help but you know remember what our grandmother said, all, all good things come to those who wait and, mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. And it does build up that anticipation and, and and we're yeah. only talking like a couple of weeks here. We're not talking like yeah, yeah. you know when you pre-order like a, a knife from like a you know it's like an like an eight month wait, which is like with the, some of the manufacturers these days. Right, right, right. No, no, but uh, but you know in in the days of this uh, sort of instant, you know, yeah. when Blade HQ takes four days to get something to me, I'm like, geez, you're really slipping, Blade HQ. What's going on? Yeah, seriously. So we're used to we're used to that instant thing, but yeah, something about that special. Uh, special purchase so uh in terms of um from russia with levan uh knives in in the future are you now um now that you know your exclusive crystal i always want to say crystal you're always you're the exclusive crystal uh it might be crystal who knows dis- i don't i've never heard anyone actually think, say it properly so that's the fancy you call it whatever you want right. and i've got to say like I don't even have a, an actual official name for any of the stuff I do. I was just calling them knife nuts imports. The from Russia with Levon thing. Um, I have to give credit to one of um, uh, our listeners, one of the knife nuts listeners and of the uh, a, a patron of, of the imports themselves um, is Yuki knives. He's you. Oh. K I he's on Instagram, but he used that as a hashtag from Russia with Levon. And I was like, I'm stealing that. I that love it. Works so well, yeah. It Not, just works. Works nicely so well, done, so. Yuki knives. Nicely yeah, done. Yeah. Some credit where credits do. I, mean, I like it's it. My it, name, so. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll take it. In. <laughs> it's your name. It's Russian knives, and also <laughs> yeah. it's uh, you know has that it's bond, bond thing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um. So, are you you're the the crystal knives distributor in the United mm-hmm. States exclusive? Are you also going to seek out other Russian designers or other Russian companies yeah. to work with? Yeah, I mean, there's other Russian production knives that the problem is you can't something I really would love to do 
Um, and if you have a means, if someone's listening to this and has a means of doing this and wants to work with me, let's let's try and get it done. Fixed blades you cannot import from Russia. Folding knives, no problem. Really? Fixed blades, big no no. Huh. And some of the most beautiful fixed blades you will ever see are in Russia right now. And they're affordable and they're amazing. Um, there's a lot of Russian custom knives that I really like. Um, unfortunately, it's it's not really great. Uh, it's not most uh, business savvy thing to do to try and import them, at least for resale. You know, you're talking about um, the customs. Yeah, customs like it just takes money out of the pockets of, of the of the makers. And it doesn't really make much sense unless you're marking stuff up astronomically. Mm -hmm. um, unless there's a larger order of them, then that might make sense. But I can't really afford to buy, you know, 40 yeah. custom knives. So, right. Well, it's that sort of thing, but uh, it's a lot of production knives. I try to keep the, some things affordable so that they have like a quirky nature stuff you wouldn't necessarily see here. Well, like the Fink, that's the perfect. Like the Finca, yeah, exactly. Or Finca, I'm sorry, and and yeah, I like uh, yeah. The Fink better actually. <laughs> that that Fink, uh, <laughs> and then and then plus the added uh, dimension of the gravity knife, which uh, um, in a minute I want I want to talk to you about the new Riot, the EXO. I think that's so cool. Uh, it is. But it's, a little odd. it's probably the most dangerous knife I own. Oh, really? Interesting. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk about that. I, I want to find this amusing. Yeah. Um, uh, what I was going to ask before before we move on to that is, what would you say if if you had to? What would you say is the overarching sp spirit? Knife spirit of the Russians. That's such a dumb and weird question. But what I mean is like. Um, like, in other words, I feel like the knife spirit in the United States is strong. You know, we, we have a thriving community. We have a culture that, uh, still, you know, respects and loves, uh, knives other, other places, maybe not so much. You go to, you go to great Britain. There are lots of restrictions, that kind of thing. What's it like in Russia? What's the knife I, vibe? I there? would say Russia is very, very, very <coughs> similar to the United States when it comes to their love of knives and things like that. They, that we have a lot in common, like when it comes to uh, that sort of thing. Um, you you see, uh, they 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 have a love for like the big beefy stuff, like in terms of knives as well. But there's like we were talking about before, there is that um, there's that uh, desire for it to really cut through something with some sort of visceral uh, swiftness, you know. Yeah, yeah, and you see that with. Um, uh, you know, that Aurora, like that thing will cut through stuff, man. Oh yeah. 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 That is, you see that a lot. You look at a lot of the Shirogorov designs, you see uh, Dmitry Stinkovich, like all of that era of the part of the world, the Caucasus, any, mm -hmm. any part of the world, like that, where the knives are designed like that. It's, you know, designed for, you know, cutting up meat, you know, working, working fields, doing stuff like that it's they're working knives you know people always have a knife on them yeah and they seem to have like uh it, you know the knives that you have here but also shirogorovs and uh sinkovich and 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 they, they seem to have a real modern sophistication to them in design too they're not just like uh, robust hard working knives uh they are that but they also yes. have a sleek to them Mod like a a modern um and i think that there's a you know uh and if you look at russian culture in general there's this or or just the culture of of that part of the world there's this um uh, desire to be seen or to for them to be known as not old-fashioned you know uh, yeah there it's it's I feel like the rest, they feel like the rest of the world sees them as like an old fashioned kind of world or nation or something like that. And you see these beautiful modern designs uh, made in modern ways and super high tech fashion. Um, uh, and I think that that there's some underlying level of that, even though it's not necessarily on the surface of, of who they are as a people, because mm -hmm. Russia is a very modern country, you know, but when you look at things like their art or their, uh, you know, their architecture and things like that, it's still, it's, you know, it's still a lot of it has to do with, you know, 
questionable parts of history. Yeah. Uh, things like that. Well, it's like they're kind of playing cultural catch up a little bit because they were sure kind of under the yoke of communism for so long. And, yeah. and a lot of that stuff is quashed. There's, like a, there's a lot more artistic expression and, and things like that because of it. Yeah. I, I think that that has something to do with it. I can't say that I know. I'm just yeah, it's, it's an educated guess. You're the the impression you get. So, um, uh, as as you keep moving um, with this, do you hope to have uh, a um, kind of a continuous flow of knives coming in, and to have kind of uh, like a uh, knives on hand, basically, like go to your site and you'll probably have stuff there. Is that is that something you're looking? Ideally, for? it's going to be slow growth. It's mm -hmm. it really is. You know, uh, right now, just getting stuff and keeping it in and i have a job and everything yeah, else yeah, yeah. besides this so it's uh, ideally that would be the case and i'm always looking for new stuff to carry and ways to um bring cool new things to to people uh, among among most of which is what we talked about is partnering with new designers to bring exclusives to of, of their designs to people i think is really what's cool i have a new website that's going to be launching soon it's ready waiting in the wings but i again i need more inventory more stuff to put on there yeah. uh to do it but you'll see knife nuts marketplace um oh. come up soon so and the the russian stuff will be obviously be, be part of that and crystal knives crystal knives.com is already part of that as well so uh, I, I want to um, I want to ask you about the EXO. Is it the EXO or the EXO skeleton? Does it have a? No, I don't remember. Let's go with EXO. EXO, the Riot EXO. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, if, if you don't know what this knife is, it's a it is a gravity knife. Uh, it sort of mm -hmm. splits open and blade slides out, and you close it back up, and it's <laughs> yeah. The blade r rides on some rails, and there's and there's a it's got this uh, scissor frame that uh, keeps it in there. That's pretty much it. So you said it is it uh the, the most dangerous knife you own. Now why would you say that? Okay. Um I want you, how do you think you carry this knife, Bobby? Uh, uh, in a sheath, maybe? I don't know. So, yes, it comes with a full Kydex sheath that you're expected to oh, for it to like geez. click into and have it be on your 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 belt loop or oh. on your belt. So the thing does not lock closed and it does not lock open. It just oh. falls. The, the knife will just fall out. <laughs> oh my God. Yes. Yeah, man. It is a beautiful disaster. <laughs> <laughs> so, so if you just dropped it in your pocket, say tip down, it your slides out the front. It, it chances it are it'll open up and that blade right. will drop out and your leg yeah. is mincemeat. Yes. Oh, so they're they're only like seventy five percent of the way there with the design. Correct. Yeah, that's very. This is very much uh, like a one point <laughs> Oh my god! Yeah. But it is so beautiful to look at, man, and fun it's to very watch. Nice. And and part of the reason it has such a great blade to handle ratio and stuff is because there's nothing there. <laughs> <laughs> it's too. It's just a hinge with a blade on a on a on a rail. I mean, and and you know, there's been plenty of of gravity knives that work like this that just you know um john gray has his gravitron which oh. was literally like the same thing but it had a button and it would lock open and it would lock closed so i mean the finca you know it doesn't it doesn't it still locks open and locks closed yeah you can use it as a knife this is very difficult to to tell you that I to actually cut stuff with the one I I, ex, I also made sure to get the double edged one to make sure it was extra dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, whenever double edge is an option, I go for it, and because I just love double edge. But but I, I was gonna say on that on that knife in particular, it's like you may as well just go for broke. You know, if you got if you got to hold the thing, you got to. Uh, it takes your own physical strength to hold it shut. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, it'll yes. keep you and aware to it, and to hold it open. So, like, if if to to keep the blade out, you have to hold it. So, if you're going to go stab a tree with it, because I don't yeah. know what else you do with such a thing, do with such a thing, yeah. do it pretty good. Because uh, if not, uh, that the blade becomes the handle. Oh my god! And then you also think about you know double edge also implies weapon. So if you're using that thing as a weapon, a you're gonna have to be pretty quick with opening it, 
And B, you better not change grips. <laughs> that, that thing might close up on you in a um, hurry. It, it's very popular on my Instagram right now. Like that, that is my very much my most popular Instagram post. I think, um, I, I think it's run out. I think it's yeah. uh, not run out. I think it's sold out everywhere. Sold out. I know that they weren't going to make more of them, but then it got so popular that they're doing another run. And I think you'll probably be able to get them before Christmas. So man, there you'll, you're definitely gonna be able to get more of those things. God, I, I don't want, I mean, this is not like something a beginner knife person should get at all ever. Yeah. A no. little, a little too much. It has, it needs some work. <laughs> It needs some work. Is that an expensive Riyadh? It seems like that one it's might not be cheap. Yeah. I think that's the only good thing, I think, is because it's far enough out of reach to where it's like 300 and some dollars. So, like, you got to really want this stupid thing. Yeah. To... It presents a high barrier. Yes, exactly. Not high enough for me. <laughs> that's why. There's no reason, you know, I just have to have stupid stuff like that. All right. So be before we close here, I want, uh, I would like to get your definition of the ideal folder. Um, and I know that's a, yeah, a huh, little, little, little something. I, it's a, you know, it's a tall it's, uh, order. I understand. But what, what do you think is the ideal folder? It's such a I'm mad at you now because that's a, <laughs> I feel like it's so, the cliche thing is like, oh, it's the it's the best EDC. It's the ideal EDC. I don't know, man. Like, and I'd feel stupid if I didn't say things like, you know, um, Brian's Evo Typhoon is one of the best folders ever made. Um, I have to talk about my friends, you know. Mm -hmm. And these are knives that are near and dear to my heart. And I've been involved with them since their inception. So I feel like I was there when they were being designed so there makes sense for me to be the best yeah you know? okay all right levon i i think uh i'm 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 not being clear i don't mean pick a one model that you think is awesome because i know that's a oh. hard thing to do but but i mean like in in your um like rank order of preferences do you like titanium frame locks do you oh. like 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 what are your hollow ground like tell tell me like if you were to build your ideal knife right now I gotcha. like, what would be the component parts honestly man i i lately i i used to be like a hollow ground snob like oh look at the hollow grind on this it's so nice and the, but honestly for the stuff that i do around the house like you know what my most used knife around my house is right now is hmm. this bird knife with a <laughs> with a with a half serrated edge that i got in a going gear edc club you know yeah yeah so, the like, yeah, uh, Going Gear sends me their EDC uh, club subscription pack. And I love going through that because I see what people are actually going to be carrying and using. And that truthfully, like, that's the stuff that I play with all the time is because I like knives. Like, I don't care what they cost. I'm not like that much of a snob. I am a knife snob, but I love cheap knives, too. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, like, I like here I've had this I've had this for like forever like this stupid fake sabenza with a uh, with <laughs> access a, lock with a uh, access lock on it i've probably had this for like 10 years or something like that it's just sitting here on my desk you know like just oh and you know what look speak of the devil look what's here it's that bird knife oh, i brought yes. it up here to break down some boxes so like i, I have knives that i like there's at any given time there are knives strewn about my house and it's normally like stuff like that that i can beat up and and really get in there and and test you know or just use and not feel bad about and then there are knives that i get true pleasure out of using like i'm just amazed at the ergonomics and the thought that went into things and that's where we get into like you know uh the other knives that we just talked about you know what i mean yeah uh but when it comes down to like is it something that I can break down this cardboard box as I'm redoing my office. You know, yeah, a whole different story. 
Well, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I I think that's what it comes down to. They they bring they they fill different roles, and one of like like you. I mean, I really relate to the. I, I didn't like, answer your question at all, by the no, way. No, no, no. I mean, you know, I I like really cheap knives. I like really expensive knives. I I like them all. I have a I have almost an equal craving for all of it. I don't have a craving for, um. 100 you know like uh 80 to 150 dollar knives i don't know why nothing in that realm excites me too much i like really inexpensive I'm gonna, or i'm gonna send you i'm gonna send you one have of the um one of the import knives that's in Ooh. my because you're right that is a tough range that mm -hmm. price range because it's too cheap for the snob and too expensive for the yeah for the casual knife geek yeah but Truthfully, that is where some of the coolest stuff lives right now. Really? Um, yeah, man. So right now, one of the knives that I import uh, is another Ivan Braganitz design. And it's that uh, the Arcona Nettle F. I don't know if you saw that on my page. I'm just going to send you one. Okay. It is a front flipper with a with a K. Oh, two, yeah. Yeah, you, uh, they were either in blue or black, I think, on yeah. your page, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Very interesting looking knife. Yes. That is a cool looking knife. Uh, they're eighty five. They're eighty five bucks. I still have like two or three left, and those are in stock. Like you don't wait for those. But um, I'm going to send you one, and that is a fantastic user. Like you can be a snob and throw it in your pocket, don't care about it, and just use it, man. Like it's just really cool, and you will never find run into somebody with one. You oh, I mean? that's yeah. 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 So it's well, a really cool, like unique piece. Oh, thanks. Well, yeah, I'd really love to check it out. And, and front flipper too. Like I need more front flippers in my life. I actually have none it, except my Emerson's, which all happen to be incidental front flippers because of the protruding tang. But, um, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, all right. Well, I, I look forward to checking that out. Is, is, so um, let people know how they can get in touch with you or how they can find your knives. Oh, yeah. uh, what's, what's the best way to follow you? Uh, well, I, you can always find me on Instagram on um, knife nuts podcast on there. Um, you can find links to my co-hosts in that bio there too. So if you want to reach out to Brian, Dave or Jake, um, but I'm always knife nuts podcast. Um, you can visit us and find all the links to everything, our YouTube, our Patreon, our, my imports, all of that on knifenutspodcast.com. Um, what else? What else could I possibly say? I don't know. And you dropped two little exclusive bits of news right here. So I, I think just for you, just for me, just for me and the millions and millions of viewers. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Those millions. <laughs> <laughs> all righty, sir. Well, thank you so much for coming on the, the podcast. I really appreciate it. Levon, it's always a pleasure. And I, I really like what you're doing right here with the, with the knives from Russia. They're so cool. And, uh, well, I mean, this, I, I can only speak for this knife. It's really uh, added some, some much needed spice to the collection. So thank you, buddy. Really I, appreciate you having me. Uh, it's my pleasure. Take care, man. Thank you. Ever strop a knife again, even though it gets no real use? Face up to what you are. You're a knife junkie. There he goes, Levon of the Knife Nuts podcast and uh, from Russia with Levon. Uh, I love hearing that he loves the cheap knives too because, uh, um, well, it just resonates with me. You know, I feel, I guess, junkie is in my name. And sometimes, uh, you know, when I have to bust out and get a, get a fix for a cheap knife at Walmart, it makes me feel bad about myself. But I like knowing that there are others out there. And I don't think Levon ever stoops that low, uh, but uh, ni nice knowing. Nice knowing him anyway. Uh, so there you go. Uh, Levon of Knife Nuts Podcast. Check out uh, Wednesday for the midweek supplemental. And of course, Thursday night uh, for our 10 p.m. live stream, Thursday Night Knives right here. And uh, also check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, well, everywhere else. All right. For Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. 
For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Podcast.